It's another award-winning season of football across Minnesota. Chip Scoggins, Star Tribune columnist and, of course, writer of the Football Across Minnesota feature, is with me. We're adding a video element to it this year, highlighting some of the key themes from the week. Chip, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's uh, nice to have... We call it FAM for short. FAM. We're in, fam. FAM. We're in the FAM. We're in the FAM. All in the FAM. Yeah, this is... We're all in the fan. This is week or season four of fam. So yeah, I believe it's, it's already our fourth season and uh, kind of uh, we got it started four years ago thinking, you know, I've covered uh, football at all levels in Minnesota, high school, college, pro Vikings. So why don't we just try to throw all those together and blend them together. And uh, each week we're going to write about uh, football in our state at all levels. Even uh, uh, I've written before high school youth football. So sure. um, if anybody sees this and has a great fam idea about something in the football community throughout Minnesota, greater Minnesota, send it to me. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. We're back for fourth for season number four. Yeah. And you had some, obviously they're great every week, but you, you know, it's week one, you go, you go out, you go out strong. What, what was, you know, what's, what's catching your eye in week one here? Yeah. So I, um, I'm going to lead with uh, a couple things. Here's St. Paul Johnson. Um, Started. They actually had a buy uh, in week two, but the, they started off with a thrilling win, 38-35 over Highland Park. And their coach, Coach Rich, is uh, what people know him at in uh, St. Paul, uh, came to school the first day of school that following Tuesday, day after Labor Day, and the school was a buzz about football, which is not something he always hears there. Um, kids were excited about it, and he had 20 kids sign up to play football after that first game. Um, their numbers, like a lot of schools, uh, particularly in the city, are, it's a struggle to get their numbers up. He's been, his first year he had high 20s. Since then, he's been kind of low to mid 30s. Uh, and then he, he had 20 kids say they want to join the football team. He's constantly trying to recruit basketball players or hockey players or whatever to come out for uh, football. So that was a uh, a, a huge relief and, and joy to him. And it, that first game, they have a really talented junior receiver uh, named Justice Moody, and mm -hmm. Justice had six touchdowns in that first game to tie Thomas Tapay's program record, and they believe it might have been a um, uh, would have been a, a tied the record for the old St. Paul City Conference. Um, but uh, yeah, Justice had two rushing touchdowns, four receiving touchdowns. He had a long kick return. He had an interception. Uh, he scored the game-winning touchdown with 30 seconds left on a mm. jet sweep, and so Justice is a and just as the kid who who played at the West Side Boosters program there in St. Paul growing up and had offers to go to some private schools, some bigger suburban schools, but uh, chose to, to go to, to St. Paul Johnson and to stay there. And as he said, um, I'm proud to play for Johnson. I'm not a, uh, embarrassed to say where I play. And he's, he's trying no. to grow that program and help the coach get more numbers out and and really kind of establish that program as, um, you know, something that kids should strive to play for. That's amazing that they had 20 kids go out after that first game, just, just that excited about it. And, and you know, that's, that's yeah. the rallying influence of a football program though, and sports it in is. general on a school, right? It is. And it, coach Rich said, you know, because you had a big win and a great performance by justice and people were kind of talking about it. You got some media attention because of um, the win and the way it did. Well, that sparks interest. I guess kids who are maybe on the fence or maybe, you know, not sure they want to play. They're like, Hey, I want to be part of something cool or something, you know, that's going on. And so that's how it starts. And, you know, you're, uh, I've talked to a number of coaches that are constantly recruiting the hallways, you know, Hey, come out for football, give it a try. And so yeah. it helps when you have that kind of game and, um, and, and kids in school are talking about the program in a positive way. And so, yeah, that was a, a important, a win for them and justice uh, what he did with the six touchdowns. I mean, that got a lot of people's attention. And so um, they're off to a good start. Like I said, they had a, a game fall through for them. A team had to forfeit last week. So they're back in action this week. Really quick. Um, great story out of Minnesota Duluth too. Their, their kickers yeah. got a real cool personal story. Yeah. Curtis Cox, uh, Cox is their uh, longtime kicker. He's a graduate student there last spring. July or uh, spring of 2023, he was doing some community service work in the athletic Department. He was helping kids sign up for the registry for the Be a Match, the donor program. Yeah, and he was just sign them up. They do a quick uh, cheek swab and send it off to the lab. And uh, turns out he got picked. Um, he got an, an, a letter, an email in uh, November of 2023, this past November, saying that he was a match for a two-year-old boy somewhere in the United States who has leukemia. 
uh, needed his bone marrow uh, transplant. So he, the uh, organization flew him to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. He went through the, the procedure where they uh, harvested his stem cells uh, out of his hip. Um, the, you know, he doesn't get any personal information. All he knows is it's a two-year-old boy somewhere in the in this uh, in this country. And, you know, he helped uh, wow. ho- hopefully save that kid's life and put him on a road to recovery. So really cool story, really cool act by him. And it just took a, he said it was a 10 second cheek swab and, uh, wow. you know, he makes a profound impact on a family somewhere in this country. That's fantastic. That's the kind of stories you're going to have all Absolutely. year in, uh, in football across Minnesota. Really quick too. Who, who gets the, who got the game balls this week? Who's on your list? There's going to be a few Vikings. I think, I think so. Like they were good. Get one. They were good. Uh, yeah. Sam Darnold gets one. And I also have an item on, I thought the two head coaches of the two most visible teams, uh, PJ Fleck throwing a ball and against a non-conference opponent and Kevin O'Connell running the ball to establish a run. I thought they had really good game plans and I'll highlight them too. Hope they can play the Giants in Rhode Island every, every <laughs> chip. Do you think? That's right. That would be nice. Gets a little tougher as they go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, chip, good stuff. Like I said, we're going to do this every week. You're going to write fam every week. Look forward to yep. that feature every Tuesday on StarTribune.com. Chip, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Mikey.